Two and a half years ago, I was on welfare and benefits pretty much until the day I was given a check for a quarter million dollars for my company. So I wanted to create something young people could write on, young people would read. And so I created Planet Ivy. It was an online magazine written by and for young people. Within six months, it had 300,000 visitors a month. Within one year, it had a million visitors a month. I then launched a second site, Screen Robot, that got to a million visitors a month within 100 days. I then got into the Techstars Accelerator, ahead of 1,500 other companies. I then launched an agency, Magnific, so we do content writing and growth hacking as a service. And I'm going to be talking about some of those things tonight. So think of tonight as a game. There will be three levels, maybe some more after that. Um, but once you know the rules of the game, you know how to break them. So, having gone into Techstars and launched an agency, I then started doing more and more talks. Um, I then started writing for the likes of Huffington Post and Tech City News. I also was interviewed in the likes of TechCrunch and Inc. I've been the marketing teacher for General Assembly, and this talk won Best Talk at South by Southwest B2B last summer. Nice. All right. um, I also did some work with the Royal Family, most recently uh, helping out Prince Andrew with his Picture Palace series, training the startups he's helping out to get better at social media. So this is me with Prince Andrew. I went to St. James's Palace uh, with a lot of the Royal Family. Uh, I met Fergie, uh, I met his daughter, Princess Beatrice. She asked for my email, but she has not emailed me yet. Content my company's written has been seen by over 50 million people, over 150 million page views. My own network has well over 100,000 likes and followers, over 50,000 new followers for my clients in the last six months, and thousands to sign up for their startups. So companies come to me when they're just starting out, they have an idea, they've raised a little money, and they want to grow it, they want to get those early users, they want to get that early traffic, grow their community, and find out if they're smoking crack or if they're onto something. So we send tens of thousands of clicks to clients we work with every month. So today we'll be looking at what growth hacking is, how to growth hack in real life and on social, looking at how to find customers on Twitter, looking at things like social news and email, and then some other cool stuff like productivity and psychology. Uh, if content marketing is important to your company, uh, I'm doing a workshop this week and I've been touring America, so if you're anyone else know anyone else who's interested in what I have, then drop me an email. Also, uh, email me at the end and I'll send the slides so you don't have to take a hell of a lot of notes. So growth hacking is basically getting a whole lot of shit done with very little resources. Growth hacking is the reason the likes of Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and everyone else grow very, very fast without actually spending anything on marketing. So you can look to what they do and then create your own processes, but it's always better if you create something that hasn't been done before. So understand how to play the rules of marketing and then once you know the rules, you can break them. So always understand the channel before you start experimenting. So the golden rules of growth are that it should be scalable, repeatable and predictable. This means you need to be able to do a hell of a lot of it over and over and have predictable results. This is why I love Instagram and Twitter. There's hundreds of millions of people on those platforms. You can reach out to them, they're completely public. That well will never run dry. So if your company can get users from these platforms, then that is a very good thing. So the golden rules of growth hacking. The first rule of growth hacking is, you do not talk about growth hacking. <laughs> why do I say this? People tend to want to talk about what they're doing. They want to be going, this is what we've done. We've got loads of users this way. As soon as you write a blog post on that, market is like me, see it, and then we rinse it, and then it's no good. Likewise, the second rule of growth hacking is you do not talk about growth hacking. This is to your investors, to your friends. You don't say, we're really good at Twitter, or we have an email list of 200,000 that we've managed to acquire from someone. Keep secrets to yourself. People want to believe in magic. You want to tell people, we do good things, people listen, and people are reacting. That's far better than saying whatever the truth actually is. Likewise, speak to your customers with defined messaging before you go viral. And before you try this great growth hack, make sure your website's clear what you do. Most startups fail at this. Your website loads fast. Um, it's a real smooth process to onboard them. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of traffic hitting your site, and none of it will convert into anything. 
So make sure the site looks good. And at a basic, you should understand uh, how to speak to customers. There's an ebook called The Mum Test, which is great for this. Now, when you tell your mum you're making an app, she will say, that sounds great. I would definitely use it. It's like a cooking app or whatever. But she wouldn't actually use it. She's just saying that to be nice. Now, when you go to a networking event and you go, I'm working on an app, what do you think? Most people will say, it sounds great. Uh, let me give you my email and let me know when it launches. And then they never get back to you. When you speak to people, say, my friend is working on this app. I don't know if it's a good idea. What do you think? Then you'll get much better feedback. And when you're getting people to your website, make sure you understand the basics of user experience. I can go through most things you need in 90 seconds if someone wants to time me. Does anyone have an iPhone up there? Okay, great. So I'm going to go through all of this in 90 seconds. If I go over, I want you to like make a screaming sound. Let me know when you're ready. Okay, so this is tailorbrands.com. You can create unlimited free logos for your company. This is uxmyths.com. Read this if you're just starting out and you want to understand user experience. Like mobile users are distracted, simple equals minimal, sometimes aren't true. This is called Samic. Design your site on here rather than paying a designer to do it. You can hand this to any developer and you can build your site. This is how your sign up should be. Don't have your email, don't have the password, just have the sign up button. Get them using the app and get the other stuff later. They should auto log in after they sign up. Don't boot them out and make them log back in. And always email them straight away when they sign up and ask them how they found your site so you know which of your marketing channels is working. This is the UX checklist by GitHub you should go through before you launch. These are the five best call to action buttons of all time. Sign up will get the most sign ups. After that, download free. After that, start with your free forever account. Then get started. And if the product's more complex, a how it works button. This is Crazy Egg. This checks where people hover on your screen so you can see what they want to do, not just what they click. Optimizely helps you A-B test different messages. Obama used it on his campaign, and different messages resonate more and get much more sign-ups. This is a website launch checklist you should go through before you go live. This is Paula Root. It has real-time surveys. Why don't you click this? Why are you leaving the site? So you can find out why people do things, not just what they do. Just five users will find 85% of your user experience problems, so always do a test on that to begin with. And if you're looking to create an about page, go to bestaboutpages.com and you can find the best ones that other companies have created. Did I make it? <laughs> Alright, cool. Okay, um, so I coach a lot of founders and they always say, we have loads of ways to get users, what should we do? And the answer is always, do the things that will get the most users the easiest first. If you're naturally good at Twitter, then build out on that Twitter following and get those users. If you're confident and outgoing, do public speaking to get users. If you have access to an email list, do that to get users. You'll get momentum, you'll get traction, and then you'll get learnings that you can bake into the other channels and over time get into the harder channels which don't have such an immediate effect. Your goals for Growth Hacker should be smart, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based. We want to grow our users is a terrible goal. We want to grow 10,000 users before South by Southwest is a much better goal. We're going to do this by reaching out to 10,000 people a week on Twitter. We're going to do this by flyering everyone in the Santa Monica area using TaskRabbit. We're going to do this by getting into two email lists that have 20,000. And we're going to pay five influencers $50 each who have a massive following. So you can do all of this and then have very specific goals that you break down uh, and likewise investors will be very interested if you say this is what we're going to do and this is how we're going to do it. If you're new to online marketing, go to growthhackers.com. It has all the latest case studies on Pinterest, YouTube, blogging, whatever your channel is.